Think of the warm summer evening twilight, the cars pulling into the field, getting ready to watch the large screen in front of them from the safety and comfort of their own car. The first, the first drive-in movie theater opened in Camden, New Jersey on June 6, 1933. But it was the 1950s that the drive-in became a national obsession. It consisted of a large screen, a projection booth, a concession stand, and a large parking area for automobiles where people could watch a movie from the comfort of their own cars. Among its advantages was to watch a movie without a baby screaming. In fact, a family with a baby could take care of their child while watching the movie. Teenagers with access to cars, found drive-ins ideal for dates. Fess Parker played the hero of the Alamo, Davy Crockett, on the Disney TV series Disneyland. Coonskin caps, similar to what Davy wore, became a national obsession with kids. Davy Crockett lunchboxes, moccasins, watches, and books flew off the shelves. The need for the faux dream of happiness and innocence inspired the creation of two of our cultural icons. A dream became a reality on July 17, 1955, when Walt Disney opened Disneyland in Anaheim, California, at a cost of nearly $17 million. The happiest place on earth appealed to children and adults alike who were able to enter the magical land and leave their problems behind. Ruth Handler, co-founder of Mattel Toys, de developed the Barbie doll as a model of a bubbly, youthful teenage innocence. Named after her daughter, Barbara, the Barbie doll was introduced in 1959. In its first year, 350 million, sorry, 350,000 Barbie dolls were sold at $3 each. Notice the difference in the original Barbie and what Barbie is now. Other national obsessions included the UFO. Although reports of UFOs and flying saucers had been around for centuries, the hysteria of alien invasion hit all-time highs in the 1950s. Beginning in the 1950s, UFO-related spiritual sects, sometimes referred to as contactee cults, began to appear. Most often, the members of these cults rallied around a central individual who claimed to have either made personal contact with space beings or claimed to be in telepathic contact with them. Supports for these types of reports fueled an increasing paranoia in the public, and America was quick to capitalize. Movies, comic books, lunchboxes, dime novels, etc., all focused on Martian invasion as a new source of material. What is today's equivalent of the American Bandstand? There is none. Beginning as a local program on WFIL-TV Channel 6 in Philadelphia on October 7, 1952, America Bandstand would go on to become one of television's most treasured programs of all time. Originally hosted by Bob Horn, and known as Bob Horn's Bandstand, it would get its most famous host, Dick Clark, in 1956, and its most famous name, American Bandstand, in 1957. Hot new bands and artists would use Bandstand to get their start and promote new records. From its inception in 1952 to 1963, Bandstand was aired daily. It went off the air in 1989 after a 37-year run with most of those hosted by America's oldest teenager, Dick Clark. Fashion in the 1950s was iconic, situating itself forever in America's minds. The poodle skirt was one of the looks most associated with the 1950s. A poodle skirt is a wide swing skirt with a poodle applicator transferred onto the fabric. Poodles were not the only items used to adorn these skirts, they were just the best remembered. Blue jeans became popular, even standard apparel for guys of the decade. Girls could only wear them around the house or to play. 
jeans were almost always rolled up at the bottom. 50s hairstyles of the time were soft and curly. In fact, teenagers would often tie their hair back in a ponytail and circle it with a pretty chiffon scarf. Or you would have updos like the beehive. For guys, either the crew cut or the flat top were the hairstyle of choice. Whether you're swinging it around your waist, neck, or arms, the hula hoop was the national symbol of fun. Richard Kerr and Anthony Arthur Spudmelon, founders of the Whammo Company, which is still up and running, are the architects of perhaps the biggest fad of all time, the hula hoop. The name hula hoop came from the Hawaiian dance its users seem to imitate. Whammo manufactured 20,000 hoops a day at the peak of its popularity. Fearing that the new popular media craze, the television, would steal away their customers, movie studio executives needed to hook people back into movie theaters. 3D movies proved to be that hook. Reintroducing a 1920s development, in 1952 movie executives produced Bawana Devil, a story of a man-eating lion that jumps off the screen at you.